Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. The fraction 17 over 10 is written in the form 1 plus 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C. What is the value of A plus B plus C, where A, B, and C are positive integers, that is, whole numbers greater than 0? This is from the Hua Lu Gang competition in China, and I read it was for elementary school students, which I believe could be something in the range of 10 to 12 years old. But if you're familiar, please let us know the details in the comments. In any case, it's a very interesting question. So what's the answer? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. There are many ways to solve this problem, and I'm going to present four different methods, so I hope you stick with me to the end of the video. We'll first start out with method one, which is finding a common denominator. This is the long way to solve the problem, and it illustrates how if you approach the problem the wrong way, it can be very difficult. So let's start out with b plus one over c. We want a common denominator, so we'll multiply b by c over c, c over c is equal to 1, so we're just multiplying by 1, which is fine. So this now becomes bc over c plus 1 over c. We now have a common denominator of c, so we can add the numerators. So this becomes bc plus 1 all over c. We now need to take the reciprocal of this. So we need to switch the numerator and the denominator, and that will become c over bc plus 1. We now substitute that in. We now have a plus c divided by bc plus 1. So let's simplify this with a common denominator. We'll multiply a by 1 over 1, which is bc plus 1 over bc plus 1. Then we get the following sum. We now have a common denominator. So we can just add this together. So we have a multiplied by bc plus 1 plus c all over bc plus 1. But now, once again, we have to take the reciprocal of this, so we're going to switch the numerator and the denominator. So we end up with bc plus 1 all over a multiplied by bc plus 1 plus c. We now substitute that in. We can now subtract 1 from both sides. 17 over 10 minus 1 is equal to 7 over 10, and this is equal to bc plus 1 all over a multiplied by bc plus 1 plus c. So where do we go from here? We will now cross multiply. So the seven gets multiplied by the denominator of the other fraction and 10 gets multiplied by the numerator, which is bc plus one. So we go ahead and simplify that. We get seven a multiplied by bc plus one plus seven c is equal to 10 bc plus 10. Let's subtract 10 bc from both sides. And then we will take a factor of c c multiplied by the quantity 7ab plus 7 minus 10b plus 7a is equal to 10. So let's solve this equation for c. So we will subtract 7a from both sides, and then we'll divide by 7ab plus 7 minus 10b. So we've solved that c is equal to 10 minus 7a all over 7ab plus 7 minus 10b. Now we know that a, b, and c are positive integers. So let's just say that a is the smallest positive integer 1. So what would happen there? Let's just substitute in. c is equal to 10 minus 7 all over 7b plus 7 minus 10b. This simplifies to be 3 divided by 7 minus 3b. So we can test our values for b. We could imagine if b was equal to 1, 2, or 3, and we get the following results. Now we need c to be a positive integer. So if b is equal to 3, we get negative 3 halves. And anything larger than that, the denominator is just going to get more negative. So we know that there can be no solution when b is greater than or equal to 3. b equals 1 doesn't work. It's a fraction. And b equals 2 does give c is equal to 3. So we found a possibility. a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 3. In that case, we would have a plus b plus c is equal to 6. And that's the answer. But now we just want to check that there are no other possibilities. So what would happen if we substitute a is equal to 2? The numerator becomes negative 4, and the denominator is 7 plus 4b. The numerator is negative, and b is a positive integer, 
no matter what value of v we pick, this is always going to be less than zero. So we're never gonna get that c is a positive integer. This is also going to be true if a is greater than or equal to two, because the numerator will just become even more negative and the denominator is going to still be a positive number. So we're never gonna get any solutions here. So the only possibility is that a is equal to one, b is equal to two, and c is equal to three. So a plus b plus c is equal to six. And that's the long way to solve this problem. I will now present three quick ways to solve the problem. So let's start from the beginning. The second method will be to calculate forward. So we have 17 over 10, which is a fraction that's greater than one. So let's take out the whole integer part and then just have the fraction as the remainder. So this is going to be equal to one plus seven over 10. Now with the fraction seven over 10, let's take its reciprocal. Seven over 10 is equal to one divided by 10 over seven. So let's rewrite this. But now 10 over seven is a fraction greater than one. So 10 over seven is equal to one plus three over seven. So we can substitute in. We will now take three over seven and take its reciprocal. So three over seven is equal to one divided by seven over three. So let's rewrite that. But now seven over three is a fraction greater than one. Seven over three is equal to two plus one over three. So now let's substitute that in. And let's look at what we figured out. We've written 17 over 10 as a fraction exactly in the form that we wanted it in the beginning. So we now just read off the values for a, b, and c. a is equal to one, b is equal to two, and c is equal to three. So a plus b plus c is equal to six. And that's the answer. So this method was beautiful, but it did depend upon a cumbersome amount of calculations in terms of taking reciprocals of fractions and writing them out. So now we will go to method three which is entirely an equivalent way of solving this question using a 2000 year old algorithm known as the Euclidean division algorithm. And it was actually used to solve an entirely different problem, but it works in this case too. So let's say we have two numbers, 17 and 10, and you wanna find the greatest common divisor between them. Well, in this case, 17 is a prime number, so we know this is gonna be equal to one. But what would be the algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor between two numbers? Let's just work through it. So we start out with 17 and it's going to be equal to 10 multiplied by something. So it's going to be equal to 10 multiplied by one plus a remainder of seven. So that's step one. We now take this result of 10 and seven and we apply the same algorithm. So we say that 10 is equal to seven multiplied by something plus a remainder. So it will be equal to seven multiplied by one plus a remainder of three. We now repeat this algorithm. We have seven and three. So we say that seven is equal to three multiplied by something plus a remainder. So we need three multiplied by two plus a remainder of one. We now have three and one. And of course, three is equal to one multiplied by three, and there's no remainder. So once you get to the step that there's no remainder, this number right here will be the greatest common divisor of these numbers. So this is equal to one, of course, but we're not looking for the greatest common divisor in this case. We're looking for the numbers A, B, and C. This is known as the continued fraction representation. And quite amazingly, if you look at the numbers we figured out, that's exactly equal to the numbers in the continued fraction representation. We have one is the whole number, then we have a is equal to one, b is equal to two, and c is equal to three. So this is entirely equivalent to method two, but it's a little bit simpler because we don't have to deal with fractions. And this type of algorithm has been known for thousands of years, and it's actually very efficient. So once again, we get the answer that a plus b plus c is equal to six. Wow. Now this method alone seems like magic, but method four is even more magical. So this is going to be a visual algorithm of just what we did, but I'll be honest, I had never even seen this until I had made this video. 
So how does it work? So we have a numerator of 17 and a denominator of 10. So let's make a grid of squares where we have 10 rows and then we have 17 columns. So how does the algorithm work? The first thing is to mark off squares as large as possible and as many squares as you can. So in this grid, the largest square that we can mark off is 10 by 10, and we can do exactly one of those. Then the algorithm is to continue the process. In the remaining squares, mark off squares as large as possible and count how many there are. So in the remaining grid, we have seven columns and we have 10 rows. So the largest square we can make is seven by seven, and we can only make one of them. Now we continue the algorithm. So we have three rows and seven columns. So we can mark off two squares that are three by three. Finally, we have three rows of squares that are one by one. So we can mark off exactly three squares here. Now look at the numbers we've just derived. One, one, two, and three. Exactly like magic, these numbers correspond to the numbers in the continued fraction representation. So once again, we get A is equal to one, B is equal to two, and C is equal to three. So once again, we get the answer that A plus B plus C is equal to six. Wow, what an interesting question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.